bless you as Sister Sharon. I am excited, brothers and sisters in Christ, to give you this exhortation about the kingdom of God. Friends, if we do not understand what it is that John the Baptist, who had spent 30 years in a desert place being prepared by God to herald, to preach, to proclaim a message that had never been heard about a kingdom. We hear so much talk about the kingdom of God, but I want to tell you in a very simplistic exhortation, not only what it is, but simply where it is. Because if you do not get a hold to this concept, friend, you will continue to be lied to, some of us, fleeced, taken advantage of, prostituted, brainwashed. Religion is a counterfeit. Religion, rituals, tradition, it is a substitute and if you become a partaker, it could destroy you and you can end up losing your soul because organized religion is primarily ran by men who oftentimes do not possess the kingdom. Now, to understand this very clear, my friend, because as I say, if you don't catch that the kingdom of God, which is, according to Romans chapter 14, verse 17, is the most potent and powerful scripture for the believer, the follower of Jesus Christ, because it tells us clearly that the kingdom of God is righteousness, is peace, and is joy in the Holy Ghost. When a person has been deceived by religion, rituals, dogma, doctrine. Oh, my friend, it's a counterfeit because before God ever assigned a prophet, an apostle, evangelist, pastor, or a teacher, he always found men who would believe and listen to him and do everything that he told them to do. Adam had a relationship with God. But after him and Eve sinned in the garden, they lost that communion with God. It's like a puzzle, my friend. Every Everything was, was left intact but one piece. That piece, if we, if we fast forward to the cross, because the first Adam, his seed was corruptible, but the second Adam, who is Jesus Christ, came with an uncorruptible seed. He got the missing puzzle piece. And the, the, the human being that continues to walk this earth puzzled, mystified, confused, discombobulated, unstable, will remain until he acknowledges that he is missing a piece. Because without the peace, there will never be any peace in your life. Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. He is that one missing puzzle piece. When Adam sinned and lost that cornea, that connection, that fellowship, that intimacy that was with it was within, it was it was unspoken. Now the second Adam, who is Jesus, when he comes and sincerely comes into the heart of a human being, a follower, a born again. Religion is dismissed. It is no longer necessary for a believer. Please let me break this down because the Bible clearly tells us, friends, 
and it chronicles rituals and traditions that God implemented for the children of Israel. But when we fast forward to the second Adam, that by the time he moved through those types and shadows in the Old Testament up until the time he died on the cross and got up out of that tomb, from that time of the fall till then, God is now giving man the opportunity to live and move and have your being in the puzzle piece, in the piece. Follow me. The kingdom has now come back in you. And that itch you can't scratch, that bottomless pit of, of no joy, no peace, no sincere purpose and fulfillment. It's now dissipated because this piece, that missing puzzle piece, has been now put back intact. And that is the kingdom of God. Righteousness, which is Christ Jesus. He is your righteousness. He is my righteousness. Righteousness means right standing. He now has given us right standing to now come back into communion with God. Now follow me very closely, my friend. So with what Jesus did, it opened the corridor for man to now experience what was lost in the garden, peace, and joy that abides. Jesus said, if you abide in me and I abide in you. So what he's telling us, there is a place, there's a space of communion that the follower now has with the Christ. And it transcends rituals. It transcends tradition. Because before the fall, there was no traditions. There was no high priest. There was no tithing. There was no offerings. There was not, none of it was necessary because they had cornea fellowship, relationship. Religion is a counterfeit of relationship. And when a follower, someone that loves Jesus, has come into, and the kingdom has come into them, has come to the knowledge of Jesus, and now that peace is put back intact. What you are protecting, my friend, is the kingdom. Watch this. The kingdom of God is righteousness, right standing, Jesus, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. You have to have the Holy Spirit to, to find what many people are looking for is peace. Because my friend, let's be very clear, money, though we think that's what's going to bring the peace, it's not, it's very fleeting. If you lose your mind, if you lose your way, emotionally and spiritually, it doesn't matter, my friend, what you're driving or where you lay your head at night, if you have no peace. If you have no joy to navigate you through the vicissitudes of life, you will, like many, fall to the wayside because you must learn to protect this treasure in this earthen vessel, vessel, which is the Christ. He is peace. He is joy. And in his spirit, in God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, he communes with us. And this is why it behooves the follower of Jesus to put away the things of this world, to put away R&B music, to put away all of this nasty, raunchy uh, uh, videos, to put away pornography, to put away fornication, to put away masturbation, to put away anything that Croaches upon the kingdom, this treasure in this vessel. Why did the, uh, the man of God, Paul, tell us, do not grieve the Holy Spirit? Because he lives in this vessel. And he is the guard, guardian over the believer to get you back to God intact. So follow me, my friends. Romans, 
um, chapter 14, 17, it tells us exactly what is the kingdom. But now we need to take a walk over to Luke chapter 17. 17 verse 21 tells us very clearly that the Pharisees were asking Jesus, where is this kingdom and when is it coming? Listen to what Jesus replied. Keep in mind, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the elders and the chief priests, these were the religious giants like we have today, all these bishops and prelates. We have the same thing going on that Jesus did in his day, except it's exacerbated because of technology and because of that tradition of church membership that I've mentioned on the other videos, my friend, because we have so many corrupt preachers everywhere, you must pay attention to the teachings of our Lord and Savior. He is the one you want to mentor your ministry after. It is he. He tells these religious people who, who were asking the question, where is this kingdom? Jesus, look what he answered. This is the key, my friend, to help you understand why it's necessary for you to come out of sin, to stop, listen, to stop making excuses and to start guarding your heart and protecting your temple. What comes in my ear, what I allow in my eyes, because I am protecting my treasure, which is my Lord and my Savior, who is spirit. He is in me. Watch this now, Luke. When the Pharisees demanded of Jesus, when the kingdom would come, he answered them, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. In other words, you can't see this kingdom. Watch this. No one can say, here it is or there it is. For the kingdom of God is within you. Oh, my friend, I got to say this again. Because I understand that many people are indoctrinated. They're brainwashed. They're religious. They're churchgoers. They're just going through the motions, quoting old scriptures that grandma and them uh, quoted, and they don't have a clue what it's about. They, they don't have a clue what the Spirit is saying. They're going through the motions. The preacher is stealing their monies from them, using scriptures out of te context, using Old Testament scriptures that were, were, were done away with when the Christ died on that cross. All of the law was fulfilled with two left for you and I to love the Lord thy God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength and your neighbor as yourself. And it is in these two that we fulfill all of the law and the prophets. It is all to be hung on these two. Love God with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength and your neighbor as yourself. If you do not catch this, my friend, that God is in you, if you are truly born of his spirit, please allow me to, to simplistically explain to you what it really means to be regenerated and born again. Remember, when Adam and Eve sinned, this piece called spirit, the pneuma, the breath of God, departed, God left the flesh of man, this physical body was left intact. The soul of man was left intact, but spirit, that, 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 that voice, that consciousness that, that we are now seeking daily as the deer panteth after God. So our heart, our soul, our minds panteth that we can stay in communion now with the peace that got lost. Spirit, becoming aware when you are dead to God, you are not conscious of him. 
This is why a person can put a bullet in the back of a stranger and walk away and not blink because he or she does not have any conscience. They have no awareness of God. This, my friend, is the reason why many people are stuck in dead religious organizations because they have no awareness of God. They don't have the peace. Therefore, my friend, we have an epidemic of corruption and counterfeit Christians false brethren like never before because in the garden what man lost through regeneration you can now get it back it means the lights went out lights were out my friend when adam sent and now you can regenerate through christ jesus the death burial and resurrection of jesus through the repentance of your sin you could get the lights turned back on. In order for God to step back into the conscience of man, he must ask for forgiveness. He or she must admit, I am a sinner. I am in the darkness. I need light. I am, I'm, I'm, I'm wicked. Oh. 